So, it is Mother's Day. If you weren't aware already and you haven't been made aware by everything that's already gone on, it's Mother's Day today. So, seeing as it's Mother's Day, I thought it would be appropriate this morning uh, to talk about reproduction. Um, but don't worry, don't worry, don't be concerned, uh, because my mother is actually here this morning. My mother, Wendy Thornborough, is here. Um, and so I actually have to behave myself. Um, so the, ser the, the, the sermon this morning is titled The Birds and the Bees, but don't panic, all right? You don't, don't, don't have, you, hopefully you won't have to cover your ears for too much of it. Um, but we are, we are this morning going to be talking about reproduction, but we're not talking about biological reproduction. We are talking about the kind of reproduction that we've been called to as the people of God. So if you've got your Bibles, I'd like you to turn with me to uh, Genesis 1, verse, who, hey, who's, who's snickering? Who's snickering over there? Genesis 1, verse 28. As we know, as we're aware, this is the mandate that God gives to humanity right at the beginning of our great big story. Genesis 1.28, And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. And then it goes on. That's just the first part of 28. That mandate to humanity was to reproduce. But what we can so easily miss is how and what they were to reproduce. Too often we, we can read uh, the early uh, chapters of Genesis as a, a polemic to evolution or something like that. And you'll notice as you read through uh, those early um, chapters of Genesis, it talks about each, each plant was reproducing to its own kind, and each animal after its own kind. It repeats quite often this motif of after its own kind. And again, if we read that as a polemic to evolution, we go, see, see, after its own kind is about genetics, biology, and things like this. But what you'll find is that after its own kind motif runs right through the biblical story. There is this idea that things reproduce after their own kind. Uh, good will reproduce more good. Evil is going to reproduce more evil. And we see that even after these, uh, after these verses in Genesis, we see that the evil that begins as a small seed in a, in a single sort of couple spreads to cover the whole world to the point where God has to do something about the expanse of this evil that has spread. So we're called to reproduce, but we're called to reproduce after a, after a kind. If we look at Luke 6, verse 43 to 45, you can turn with me there if you've got your Bibles, otherwise it's up on screen there. Jesus says, no good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. And Jesus is picking up on the same motif that, that drips off the pages of Scripture, that things reproduce after their own kind, that goodness will bear fruit of more goodness. But it is not simply, this reproduction is not simply a matter of sowing and reaping, as, as we so often can think about it, that if, if I am good to someone, they will be good back to me. 
you know. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't end there, and that's not the kind of reproduction that we see in Scripture. We see it something like, who here has ever seen the movie Pay It Forward? It's a, oh cool, some of you have. It's a, it's a well, an oldish movie now, but also a newish movie, I guess. Um, the, the, the premise of the movie is uh, there's this boy who, who, for a class sort of project, decides to, um, instead of if someone's nice to him, instead of him being nice back to that person, he, he pays it forward, so he pays the kindness on to someone else, and he encourages them to do likewise. And uh, it's based on a true story. It's quite a neat movie if you, if you haven't seen it and you'd like to. Um, but basically, this thing uh, perpetuates. Um, and the movie actually starts with a, a, a sort of a, I think a newspaper journalist or a TV journalist or something. It's been a long time since I've seen it, in all honesty. Um, but he sort of, uh, he sort of uh, crashes his car in, 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 a, in a snowstorm or something and dents up his car. And this person pulls over to see if he's OK. Uh, see if he can help out and things like that. And the guy says, oh, look, my car's wrecked. I can't da, da, da. And the guy says, here, take my car. And he gives him the keys to his car. And it's quite a fancy car, too. It's not, a, it's not an old clapper, you know. Um, and that begins, you know, and, and, and that was sort of from down the line. This, this, this gentleman who had pulled over had been passed all the way down this line, this pay it forward all the way back to this little boy who started this thing as a, as a little school project. But there's something really neat about this idea that the, that the goodness didn't just go there and back and in there, that it reproduced after its own kind, causing goodness to spread throughout this community where this is happening. And that's the kind of reproduction we see talked about in Scripture. And I think we all know this. I think it's safe to say we know our mandate is to reproduce. Again, I'm not talking about biolog biological reproduction here. It's the Great Commission to go and make disciples. As disciples, we are to go and make disciples. It's throughout Scripture. We know this. So the question is not so much should we be reproducing, I think the question we have this morning is, what should we be reproducing? And if we think back to Eden again, those early pages in Genesis, and the imagery that we see there in God's goodness, we see this imagery of fruitful abundance, where there is literally just fruit hanging from the trees ripe for the picking. We see a space of endless possibilities. You know, what, what can God and mankind do from this launch pad of Eden out into the world? We see a palette of colors to create with, and we see the opportun opportunity for mankind to join with the creator in his creative process. It's mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling. We see God walking in the midst of the garden with them. And we see shalom, this Hebrew word, which really means that there's nothing missing and nothing is broken. And if we follow, if we follow the thread right through Scripture, which we do not have time to do this morning, so we will not. Um, but if we do, if we do, we will see that Eden goes through to the tabernacle, and the tabernacle is, a, is representative of Eden, and the temple is representative of Eden, and Jesus is the new tabernacle, and then Jesus commissions the church to be the new tabernacle, the new temple which means here in this community of believers, right here in this room, we are called to be Eden. We are called to be like Eden, where there is fruitful abundance, where there's endless possibilities, where God's presence 
is here. And from here, we can reproduce God's goodness to cover the earth. It's what God always wanted for mankind and what he still wants for us now. And the exciting thing through the gift of Jesus and through his spirit is available to us as a Christian community now. I want you to just join with me and imagine for a moment. All right? Just turn that little bit of your head off, that little bit of your brain that goes, yeah, but. Just turn that off for a second and just, will you imagine with me? Thank you. We've got one, one person to imagine. Imagine, if you will, imagine being a member, being a part of a community that did not fear, that had fear for nothing, that did not lack. They were lacking in nothing. Imagine being a part of a community of people that shared their resources, their time, their energies, and their love with one another, that all in that community might thrive and flourish. Imagine being a part of a community where you could be yourself, where you don't have to put on a mask, where you don't have to pretend to be someone else, but that you are accepted for you. Imagine a community where you are encouraged, where you are encouraged, where you are growing, where you are nurtured. Imagine being a part of something where you are taught and are given the opportunity to teach others. Imagine being a part of a community where you get to church in the morning and you realize that there's none of the good coffee left and so you have to put instant coffee on the counter and imagine the people forgiving you. Just, I really want you to imagine that one really well uh, because that could potentially be, there could be some truth in there. Imagine being a part of a community where we don't need special days of the year to remind us to honor each other and to appreciate each other. Imagine where there's no guilt, no shame, only joy and shalom, where nothing is missing and nothing is broken. Imagine, if you will, a community that is energized by the life-giving spirit of God that allows life and life to the fullest to occur, where God's wisdom is what shapes what happens, not man's wisdom, where there is no enemy and no rival, only brother and sister, where creative energy abounds and mercies are new every morning. Imagine being a part of a community where authentic, uncorrupted relationships flourish and where the King of Kings is glorified and that glory is what shapes his people. Imagine all of that, and that's not even the best part yet. Imagine all of that, but in communion with the presence of our Creator and our King. Because it's all because of Him and through Him that any of that can be a reality. Now, I know, I know, I know it can be tempting to say, well, that's nice. 
That's a nice idea. Wouldn't that be lovely? But, but you realize that that's not reality. You realize that such a community couldn't actually exist. You realize that you live in a pipe dream. And if that's you this morning, if you're sitting there going, well, that's a nice idea, but I do want to ask you, at what point did our imaginations get overturned by the story of death and decay? Because the story of our God is a story of life and life to the fullest. Acts 17, 24 and 25. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. He is the source of life. He is the glue that holds our community together. He is the energy within that would allow any of those things to be a reality. Acts 17, 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your poets have said, we are his offspring. You see that idea of reproduction once again. You know, our society, the society we live in, it's fueled by guilt and fear. It's fueled by guilt of what has come in the past. People are, are guilty or shameful for what they have done. And it's fueled by fear, fear of what is to come, fear of what tomorrow will bring, fear of will I have enough for X, Y, Z, fear of am I even going to be alive tomorrow? Guilt and fear are the two things that fuel our society. And yet, as a community of redeemed believers, we are not fueled by guilt and fear. Jesus has done away with guilt and shame, taken it upon himself that we do not have to carry our past. And in his resurrection, the resurrection that is available to us, he says we do not have to fear what tomorrow brings, for he has secured our tomorrow. He has I've lost a good word to put in there. He has he has done away with our past in terms of he has, he has taken away the need for us to have guilt and shame of what happened yesterday, and he has secured our future of what is to come. And so we, as a community of believers, do not have to live out of guilt and fear. We can live from, and we do live from, a completely alternative place to society. And that is what we should be bearing witness to in the world around us, is that we are not governed by guilt and fear. That's a good word. That's a much better word than what I did. Thank you. Yeah, he has cancelled our guilt and he's taken away any need for us to fear. That's the place that our communities live out of. That life-giving abundance of God. It is a, it is a 
totalizing alternative system to the ways of this world. God's abundance completely negates the scarcity of the world. The scarcity that says there isn't enough. And you can insert whatever you want in there after there isn't enough. There isn't enough money. There isn't enough resources. There isn't enough time. There isn't enough love for me to, you know, share with that person and that person. There isn't enough. That's the story of the world. There isn't enough scarcity. The story of God right from page one is there is more than enough. There is more than enough. Imagine being a part of a community where there was more than enough. Wouldn't you want that? Who here wouldn't want that? Who here wouldn't want to be a part of something like that? Wouldn't you want that not just when you were meeting with that community as well? Wouldn't you want that all the time? Wouldn't you want that to be your reality all the time? Wouldn't you want that community to spread to your workplaces, to your schools, to your friendship groups, to your sports clubs? Wouldn't you want that type of community in every day and in every way? Isn't that something that you would want to reproduce everywhere you went? Yeah. It's like a, one of these brand or product ambassadors. Have you guys ever, ever been so uh, impressed by a, 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 a movie or a, 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 a new shampoo or a, a new hip replacement? I don't know what's, you know. Uh, so, 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 um, so impressed that you can't stop talking about it. Everyone you see, you recommend it to them. You say, oh, have you tried this new shampoo? Tell you. Makes me smell like cow manure or something. I don't know. I don't know. I just use the water that comes out of the thing that sprays water on you. What do you call that? Shower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... But you know, when you're, when you're excited about something, when you're impressed by something, when you want, when you have been touched by something in some way, you naturally want to share it with others that others might enjoy that thing as well. You watched a good movie or something, you want other people, you listen to a good song, you want other people to hear it, that they might be moved in the same way you were moved or something. Too often, I think, within our, within our church culture, when we talk about evangelism and things, we talk about this sort of unnatural thing where we, hey, it's our mandate to go and tell people about Christ or something like that. But imagine if you were part of a community like we thought about before. Imagine how much you would want that to spread. Imagine how much you would want any person you meet to be a part of that community as well. There would be no one out there that you would go, oh, actually, no, I don't want to let them in because if they come in, they might ruin it or something. You know, or no, I don't want them to enjoy and appreciate this goodness, this mercy, this love. We're called to envision our community our church community as an Edenic equivalent, as the Garden of Eden, the precipice where heaven and earth overlap and where the wisdom and the glory of the King brings life and life in abundance. That's what our church communities are called to be. And the good news is, the good news is that God has given us everything that 
we need for that to be a reality in him, in his spirit, not by our strength, not by our trying a little bit harder, but in his spirit. The good news is the kingdom. We know this. Jesus is on earth. You ask him what the good news is? The good news is the kingdom of God. And the kingdom coming is the church. That is hugely exciting and hugely challenging. Hugely exciting because it can be a reality. We can be the kingdom coming. Hugely challenging because we should be. We should be God's kingdom coming. So when we think about it's nice. It's the kingdom coming, the bells are the bells are tolling. The kingdom is coming. Perfect. When we think about reproduction, what we are to reproduce, and we think about what we are called to reproduce, what is the kind that we are to reproduce? We think about our community, our church community, the brothers and sisters sitting next to us in this room. And we think about, we can ask ourselves this question. If the community that we have in here, within, was replicated without into the rest of our, you know, if we just start here, local, smaller community, would that look like kingdom coming? Or not quite yet? Not trying to be a downer here, not trying to put lots on us, but have we, have we failed to imagine what God has called us to be as a community? Have we at times been too wrapped up in our own little gospel or our own little, our own little church of one to miss what God has called us to be in community? And then that's the challenge to us. You know, uh, the mothers in this room and the parents in this room will know this. A, a family doesn't just happen because you're all born together. Loving nurturing families don't just occur because you're all biologically related. A family is what the members of the family actively create, not a biological reality. It is not, it is not a certitude just because we all come to church together that we will naturally develop a kingdom community. It is something that we must be intentional about. And it is something that we cannot, cannot, cannot do without the presence of God. Because without the presence of God, we don't have a kingdom community. We might be able to have a nice community. We might be able to have one that was okay some of the time. We might even be able to get to some of these ideals that I was talking about before where we, hey, we actually, we actually start caring for each other and loving each other and things like that. But without the presence of God, we still do not have kingdom community. And it is, as I said before, and as we see in Eden, and as we through, see through the, scripture, through the pages of Scripture, and as we know all too well, it is God's presence that brings life. But that's not a cop-out. That's not a cop-out where we say, oh, okay, well, we can sit back and God will make it happen. We must be intentional 
about the kind of community that we are building in this place. So our challenge is, what are we reproducing? If we were to reproduce what we have here, is that what we would want reproduced out into the world? As a redeemed community of believers, what are we sowing and what are we reaping? Are you a part of a community that you would want to see every day and in every place? And if not, then why not? I think it's an important question, and I don't think it's one we can just ignore or be apathetic about. Because we look at the people of God in the pages of history, and they were called to be a blessing. And to be a blessing means to bring the life of God, that life to the fullest. And they failed to be that blessing. And when they failed to be that blessing, God removed his presence and his name from them. How do we not fail? You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> it, is, it is together, and it is by God's grace, and it is by the gift of Jesus and the gift of the Spirit. It is all those things, and as I said, it's, it's been intentional, but the starting point, I think, is for us, and what I'm hoping to do this morning is to encourage us to imagine once again what our communities are called to be, because I think that's where we need to start. We need to actually start believing that that can be a reality, because as long as it's a pipe dream, as long as it's a nice ideal, as long as it's something that we can just talk about here on Sunday and then go home and forget about it and we'll have a new sermon next week, as long as it's that, it's going to stay that. And so, and I, I believe we, we start the journey of talking about of thinking about it, of praying about it, of going, God, how can we, how can we be the community that you have called us to be? And don't get me wrong, I know, I, I, and it would be easy to get me wrong because I realize that. I'm not saying that we have failed so dramatically and none of this applies to us that I'm talking about. I see some wonderful, amazing, beautiful things happening in this community. Do not get me wrong. But the question is, are we, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are, are, do we see that to the fullness that God has for us? That doesn't answer your question, but I told you I wouldn't be able to. But, um, but I think, again, it is something, that's a, that, is a, that is something we do together. Because that's not something the pastors do. That's not something the, the leaders do. It's something that, as a community, we do together, and we are part of that together. Um, and that, that vision and that hope needs to well up in all of us. It can't be something that we just sit here going, hey, you guys want this. It needs to naturally come from this place of, hey, imagine being a part of a community like that. Imagine being a part of the community like we sometimes see on the pages of Scripture and we have seen on the pages of history. And don't be afraid to imagine, you know. Sometimes it's good to turn off that voice that goes, yeah, but. Because that yeah, but keeps us from a lot of God's promises.
Any other questions? Any other thoughts? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to wind it up there. Um, and I hope, I do hope, I do hope that some of this that I've talked about this morning is not heavy, but exciting. Yes, Peter. Sure. Peter's going to come and correct everything I've just said. That's good. Thank you, Peter. We need someone like you. The word is affirmation. Um, I really believe that this is um, really spot on, the word of the Lord for us this morning. And, um, you know, I was just spending time with the Lord this morning, and during the worship, it was uh, came out again. And I believe that the Lord would say to me and to you, there is more, there is more, there is more, and there's more. You know, so often we tend to, well, I do, sit on my laurels of what I think I have achieved with God. But there's so much more in God. And, um, you know, just I was just thinking about um, what you said, how do we not fail him? Um, I believe it's through relationship. You know, God is an intimate God. And I've been looking at the Psalm of um, Song of Songs in the Bible a bit lately. And, um, you know, it's really, really intimate and even embarrassing. Um, but it's talking about God, the Father, and me. And, you know, the closer I get to God the more I take on of his nature. And that's for us all. You know, that is such a spot-on word for us today. You know, um, the birds and the bees, reproducing after our kind. You know, Jesus said um, that we will know them. You will know them by what? The fruit that we produce. You know, we're either... A, a slave to righteousness or to unrighteousness. We're in slavery, guys. You know, whether we like it or not, every person in this world is enslaved. And, um, yeah, God wants us to be slaves of him, to be crucified with Christ and to know the resurrection power of Christ through our lives, out into our family and community. And... Um, yeah, you know, we just, yeah, let's imagine. Let's imagine anew, just as Andrew was saying, you know, the, um, what could our nation be like? We're living in a godless nation. You know, Helen Clark said, I'm waffling a bit now probably, but um, Helen Clark said a few years ago, um, we're in a secular nation. And all the churches were up in arms, and I was thinking, actually, we really are in a secular nation. We're not founded on it, but we're living it. You know, we need to, you know, take a hold of what God's got for us. You know, so, so much more. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, and it, it, so, so true what you're saying about relationships. Uh, I hadn't known here, I didn't get there, but, um, you know, the, the gospel of the kingdom cannot be outworked in an individual by, of one person by themselves because the outworking, part of the outworking is the relationships that get built through that. You know, God himself is a trinity of persons because love is about connection and about and about building each other up and honoring each other and all those things. And so, and that's hard for us. That is hard for us in our Western society because everything is so individualistic. And so, so often we, we start, the, the, the focal point of anything is we start me first and then I'll start thinking outward if I ever get there. 
that, you know, a lot of time we just stay with me first. But with, within the kingdom and within God's love, we actually start outward first and maybe eventually we at some point get to us. And if we don't, it doesn't matter because someone else is worried about us. You know, it is a completely different, a completely different mindset and one that it does not come naturally to us at all. One that we do have to keep reminding ourselves of. But I'll stop, I'll stop. I've preached at you way too long this morning. Um, but I do, I really do encourage and I really do hope um, that within this, there is something exciting and encouraging and uplifting that you don't go away going, oh, but you go away going, God, God, what could you do? What could you do with us if we just let you? God bless you all. It is so, such a pleasure to be with you. And so do remember, please, if you'd like a photo, make sure you get a photo through there. Just line up. Be, be, be gracious and patient with each other and with Emmanuel as he takes them. Um, and don't forget the church family meeting. As we move towards that, really think about what we have talked about this morning because that's so relevant to what we will be discussing around who and what we are as a community. Just before you go, I, I would like, um, I asked if mum was happy to come up. Are you come, you wanted to say something? Come on up then first, here we go. Um, I've had this since I woke up this morning, and um, I believe this is for somebody that is going through some hard things at the moment. Um, about 16 years ago, my marriage broke up, and I went through a pretty tough time. But all the, the thing that kept me going was sometimes I didn't feel like it, but I'd pick up the Bible and read it. It didn't even matter where I read. But I was just aware of the presence of God. It was like sort of putting a plug into a three-point socket and turning on, and something happened. It was just something about God, the way he can communicate to us. And I know he does it different ways for different people. But I believe this, he's saying in this that Whatever you're going through, he's there with you. You've only got to turn to him and just talk plainly to him. Just whatever concerns you have. And as Andrew said this morning, we're not lone rangers. He's, he's set it up for us to um, talk with each other, be support for each other. So don't try whatever you... If there's somebody out there that's going through some hard stuff, don't try and do it on your own. Reach out to people and talk to God. Just talk plainly to him. Thank you. Thank you. So I've, I've asked um, Mum to come this morning just to, to, to give a final blessing um, over you all. If, uh, and she said she was happy to do that, so she wasn't coerced. Um, she hasn't got her collar on this morning. I hope, that, I hope it still counts if you're not... Okay, good, it still counts. Um, mum mum is, a, is a reverend in the Anglican Church, so uh, she will give a, a blessing over you this morning as you go. But bless you all. Have a, have a wonderful Mother's Day, mums and ladies. Um, try and survive, husbands and fathers. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and we look forward to seeing you all either tonight or next week. Thanks, Andrew. I was just thinking about the person that asked the, the question about failing. And I always love going back to the scripture and see how Jesus dealt with people who failed. And especially his disciples, because most of them were utter failures at one point or another. So just read that and see, and that's how God deals. That's how we should deal with people who fail also. So Andrew asked me to do this, so being a typical Anglican, I thought, oh gosh, I better have something to say. So I went to Mr. Google, and I found this, and I think, and I want to, um, to pray this 
with you and over us. I'm a mum. There's a lot of mums out there. It's called a blessing for Mother's Day. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you give life and care for your church. So bless us as we celebrate this day. May we be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of our faith and love shine forth. Grant that all of us and our children, that our children may honour and appreciate us with a spirit of profound respect. May the example of Mary, the mother of Jesus, inspire us to live our vocation as Christian mothers and call our children to faith. So guide and protect us in challenging times and help us to continue to trust in you all the days of our lives. And we ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.